Hey, today we're going to build this walnut dining table. And we're going to try and make our own rack and pinion gears out of wood. Let's get the help from this guy. So in this video, we're going to waste a lot of time making our own rack and pinion, which I just wanted to prove to myself that I could do, and I did. Firstly, I made it all manually on the bandsaw, on the drill press. Took a while. Took hours just drawing it up in Fusion. Once I convinced myself I could do it all by hand, I thought, I'm going to use this CNC that I spent weeks building and thousands of dollars. And the CNC did a great job. Here's proof that it worked. But making the rack and pinion was a really small part of it. Then I had to make the slides. Had to lay it out for the centers. I had to make sure it was all perfect and it took a lot of time. Really what you're making is just a big drawer stretcher. And I thought this dovetail system would work, but it didn't. So I gave up on it and I just made it square glued the pieces in there, and then ran that through on the dovetail. Once a piece was dry in this slide, I went ahead and fed it through the router table much easier with a big piece like this than a small little piece. Well, the slide works, but you gotta Notch everything out for the gear rack, for the gear. And once I got it all notched and put together, had to put a little paraffin on it to get it to slide really well. And it did slide really well. There is an easier way to make or get this hardware though. The whole design is so that you can open and close the leaf while standing on one side with one person and the legs don't move. Check this out. Went through all that trouble or make on our own. Could have bought them online all the time. Check in the description down below. And they work better than mine. Bought a bunch of six quarter walnut, which is fancy way of saying an inch and a half. And that's gonna make the top for this table. I match up all the grain the way I want to my liking and the creative director, cut it to rough lengths. Then since I don't have a planer or a joiner or a planer joiner, I go ahead and square up all the sides, even the one that comes squared up already, just to make sure. And test fit everything to make sure our joints are gonna be good. Normally I don't use biscuits when I do long grain to long grain glue up, but to minimize sanding, I'm gonna use them to keep my top as flat as possible. I'm gonna do this top in three separate glue ups just to make it more manageable. It added a little more time to the project, but there was plenty of things I could do. Using a brush for the glue works out okay, but in the end, I find my finger is way more effective. And you'll notice I don't have any white chalk, so I use blue tape. And I put opposing clamps just to keep the piece from bowing as much as I can. And now, glue up number two. using my finger and 30 times speed.
Well, I should have shown this earlier, but I always have the grain going in the opposite directions. That makes for a much more stable piece. And the final glue up. If you have good joints, it doesn't take much pressure to bring this together. And I'm constantly looking underneath to make sure it's flat. Go ahead and put some opposing clamps to take out the bow and keep checking to see if it's flat. Yes, you could use a circle jig to cut this table out. If you didn't have a CNC, which I have so I can cut it and take pictures of it and post it on Instagram. Didn't cut it all the way through because I'm gonna come back and use a jigsaw and use a plus trim router bit to make it all nice and clean and perfect. But first I'm gonna lay everything out, measure for the leg height, and cut a bunch of legs. I'm gonna put cross bracing in here that of course it's not 45 degrees, but I did figure out what the angle was and I think it came out to around 27. Put a taper on the legs according to creative director's instructions. Going to make a lap joint here where the braces cross each other. But before we put it together, we're going to drill for some dowels. Putting this together was tricky, so I screwed one leg to the base, and from there I just tinkered and glued and pressed and pulled and used clamps and ropes and straps, which surprisingly worked well. And I was able to let it sit overnight and take it apart the next day. This is the bottom of the top. And we need this just flat enough to where we can put the pedestal on it and all the guides. It took scraping and sanding and sanding and scraping and sanding and scraping and sanding. Set the depth for some mounting holes and drilled some mounting holes. The layout on these big guides is critical. They have to be parallel, they have to be square, or they're just not gonna work. This is my skirt board. I'm gonna go ahead and just do some 45 miter joinery on it. Maintain the grain where the leaf would split. And did a little round over action. Not convinced of this joinery to put the skirt to the bottom of the table. Gonna have to come up with something different. While the skirt sits and dries, we're going to go ahead and flush trim the top. And the last thing I worked on was the top of the top. I wanted to keep some knots just for a little character, so I filled them in and of course I got to sand.
it was time to perform a little delicate surgery, so we had to be really careful and precise. I did make a leaf, which you didn't get to see, and I put some mounting holes in it for the pins that the post office lost, so I had to make my own. Once the leaf was perfectly in place, I went ahead and trimmed it flush, and rounded it over, and sanded it, and all that stuff. I know I'm going to take a little bit of criticism because I don't think this is a good way to mount this skirt. It doesn't allow for a whole lot of expansion and contraction. But it did look good. Oh look, the post office unlost my pins. So I got to take the wood ones out, put the metal ones in. Now hand sanding is not fun, but using a block like this really ensures that you're nice and flat and eliminates a lot of the dips. This is just natural oil. There's no stain color in it. It just made the walnut a little bit deeper before I put a clear coat of finish on it. Put the table on a Lazy Susan so I could spin it around and cover all my angles. And just stay standing in one place. I use a catalyzed sealer. It sands extremely well. And then I come back with a catalyzed conversion varnish for my final clear coat. This conversion varnish is no different than lacquer. You have to really maintain a wet edge when you spray. And since I'm not the tallest guy in the world, I had to use a step stool to increase my reach. And the Lazy Susan really helped me maintain that wet edge to complete the finish all the way down. Ta-da! Here's the finished table. 42 inches wide, 60 inches without the leaf. The leaf's another 20 inches, so we've got a 42 by 80 table here, which is way too big for my condo. Not a problem, leaf comes right out. Guides are still a little tight, gonna take some working in. Put some paraffin on it. That seems to be helping it quite a bit. In theory, it should only take one person to close this. How about that? This project is done. I really like how this came out. I think the creative director is really gonna like it. So remember, subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. Watch those videos. See you next time.